It's time we answer a question on your stock in a little segment we like to call Your Stock, Our Take. Buy, sell, or hold. Okay, so Sleep Country Canada, uh, as Ryan said, this is a company that many years back we had um, we had coverage on. Uh, more recently, we've been following it very closely. The company just put out their Q4 results on March 3rd. Now, one of the reasons we've been following it very closely recently is because the valuation has looked compelling to us. So we, we put out our dividend all-star report in February. And within that report, we had 15 companies that were in our top tier monitor list. Sleep Country made that grade. Uh, not a company that we were recommending specifically, but a company that where we saw good potential value over the next several years um, based on just the company's recognizable brand, strong historic financial performance and valuation. So the company trades right now at a share price of just under $26. It's a $900 million market cap. And Sleep Country, of course, they are the largest retailer of mattresses and bedding accessories in Canada. They operate three segments, Sleep Country, uh, Dormez Vu is the brand in Quebec, and also Envy and Hush. As I said, the company put out their Q4 results on March 3rd, and as expected, those results were down. Um, revenue was down about 10.4% to 243 million. Same store sales growth was negative 11.5% in the fourth quarter. Adjusted EBITDA declined almost 15%, and adjusted EPS declined 19%. This was expected. This was not any surprise to the market, really. We put out our research in the Dividend All Star after they put out their Q3 results. The Q3 results were also down. Uh, there's already signs of lower consumer spending or consumer confidence that was impacting the company. So this was more or less expected. For the full year of 2022, the results were decent, roughly flat. Revenue was $928 million, up about 0.9%. Same store sales growth was one point, negative 1.8%. Now, this was compared to a very strong year in 2021, where same store sales were up 18.3%. Um, and Sleep Country was really a winner during a lot of the pandemic as people were spending a lot of money on home items. Adjusted EBITDA for 2022 up 3.6% and adjusted EPS up 6.4% to 281. So they did have very strong strength um, in 2021 and for the first half of 2022. And it's really Q3, Q4 where we started to see the financial performance slide moderately. Just a few, a uh, little bit of commentary from the from the Q4 report. So essentially what was impacting the results in the last half of 2022, uh, this was higher interest rates, reduced consumer confidence due to fears about potential recession. And what is it, what this has done is it's led consumers to delaying large purchases. And of course, if you're financing these large pur purchases that at current interest rates, uh, those that, that it becomes a lot more expensive. One of the other things that the company noted is, noted is that consumers were shifting their spending um, from home items to more experience focused spending, such as travel. So, of course, people were traveling a lot 2020, 2021. They were spending more on their homes um, now in 2022 or the latter half of 2022 and in 2023. We're seeing um, we're seeing people spending money outside the home. But management remains confident in its growth potential. Uh, it's committed to a strategy of organic growth, e-commerce, accessory expansion, and growth by acquisition. So historically, Sleep Country has 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 performed extremely well. Um, good consistent growth in revenues, consistent growth in uh, gross pro gro gross profit margins, and operating EBITDA as well. Um, revenue over the past four years, up to 2021, grew at a rate of about 12 percent. Earnings per share growing at 11 percent. Uh, some of this was acquisitions. A lot of this is same same store sales growth as well. And they really are one of the more recognizable brands in the in the Canadian stock market and as well um, a dominant leader within the, the mattress and bedding industry. We wanted to take a look at the at the debt leverage and the financial position. So the company has about 413 million in debt. They reported 218 million more or less in adjusted EBITDA. So that gives them a debt to EBITDA multiple of about, of about 1.9 times. Debt to EBITDA, this is one of the key leverage ratios that we would look at. 1.9 times, that's not an unreasonable multiple 
Although I would say, you know, it's struggling to butt up on that that two to two point five times range, which we would consider an absolute maximum. So ideally, we would probably want to see this multiple somewhere in the one to two times range, maybe about one point five times. Still at a reasonable level right now, uh, but we wouldn't want to see it much higher. And then in terms of valuation, the company at the current share price of twenty six dollars and earnings of two eighty one is trading at a price to earnings valuation of about nine times. So we do expect likely uh, earnings are gonna are gonna decline moderately in twenty twenty three. So you know we may see the valuation on forward earnings at around ten, maybe even eleven times. But still, relative to where this company has traded in the past, this is still a very reasonable valuation for long term investors. So just our take on Sleep Country, we're expecting to see a challenging environment continue uh, throughout 2023. This is potentially going to go into 2024. But on the positive side, what we have here is we have a, a dominant leader in their industry. It's a very recognizable brand, highly profitable company, and a strong track record of success. Um, we do see potential opportunity in the company for long-term investors at the current valuation of about nine times earnings. Uh, what we would say is that if somebody was interested in the company, you could you could continue to monitor them as we're doing right now. This is something that we could see ourselves recommending over at some point in 2023. If you wanted to take a position in the company, we would say start small. No need to rush into a, to a full position. Maybe start with a quarter position and see how the company progresses over the course of the year.